Today marks the 112th anniversary of our national celebration of Father's Day. And yet the role of fatherhood was founded when God, the Creator, first formed Adam, then Eve. He set them in order and anything outside of His divine design is a perversion. This sacred state of being a father is under a full-on assault as never before in this hour. And the opposing forces, they are not just focused on targeting men and fathers in this generation, but they are fully intent on corrupting the generations to come. And is it any wonder since the entire family finds its identity in the active role of the father. So vital is this God-given role of father that scripture reveals to us and shares hope with those of us without a father. Psalm 68 and 5 reads that a father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. I want us to absorb this truth in Revelation that even if there is no attending father, God will not leave that role unfulfilled. He himself, so vital is the role, he himself will step in to that role of father in every one of our lives. Dads that are here today, that are watching, that are at Abita, dads, the demands may fluctuate. The pressures may vary in degree. The challenges that we face, they continuously present themselves in countless ways each morning that we awake. The threats, if you will, to the theater of fatherhood are relentless. But that God-given role and its function in our society and our families remains paramount and it must be passed on. The writer of Psalms 145, he penned the words that one generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. Stressing the importance of there to be a continuance of all that God has gifted to a generation. It must be passed on. It is so very important. This morning as we celebrate Father's Day together, I prayed and will continue to pray as we do often in each day for every father and every family that is a part of this church. We may not realize it, but our world and more importantly, our immediate world is dependent upon our remaining active in this sacred role of fatherhood. They are considered the elite of the elite 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment. It is the oldest active duty infantry unit in the Army serving the United States since 1784, also known as the Old Guard. The volunteers that make up this military guard at the tomb of the unknown soldier have held this distinguished duty since 1948. For the past 74 years, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, regardless of any weather imaginable, they stand watch. The Old Guard annually participates in more than 6,000 ceremonies and average throughout the year of 16 per day. Adorned with their silver ID badges upon which is a depiction of the tomb's front face, read the words, Honor Guard. They work on a three-relief three rotation consisting of a commander and six sentinels. The reliefs are organized by size and height to all look similar 
in appearance. Each guard or sentinel, as they're also known, must undergo rigorous training and pass a demanding series of examinations. They must be in superb physical condition and possess an unblemished military record. They must become qualified in guard change ceremony, learning the manual of arms and methods for keeping their uniform and weapons in immaculate condition, all to earn the privilege of what they call walking. The tomb guard marches exactly 21 steps down the black mat situated behind the tomb. They then turn east for a period of 21 seconds, then north for an additional 21 second pause, then turning 21 steps back down the mat and repeating the process 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. No breaks, no pause, no bathroom, no lunch, no distractions, but with a laser-like focus, they stand and they march. At the end of that process, they execute a shoulder arms movement, placing their weapon on the shoulder closest to the visitors looking on, signifying that he or she, because they can be either male or female, they stand between the tomb and any possible threat. But every hour on the hour and during certain times of the months throughout the year, every half hour, an impeccably uniformed relief commander appears on the plaza to announce the changing of the guard. The new sentinel, he leaves or she leaves the tomb guard quarters, unlocking the bolt on their M14 rifle, signaling to the commander to begin the ceremony. The relief commander then performs a detailed white glove inspection of the weapon. And then both the relief commander and the retiring or the relieving sentinel must meet the retiring guard at the center of the black mat in front of the tomb. Where all three then salute the unknown soldiers after which the relief commander orders the relieved sentinel these words. He says, pass on your orders. The current sentinel then replies in commanding post and orders remain as directed. And the newly posted guard replies, orders acknowledge and steps into position on the mat. This morning, I have come to tell you that this elaborate and this elite ceremony is known as the changing of the guard. And that is what I've come to minister to every man, every father, and every husband today. That we must know that there is a day coming. There is a day ahead of us that there will be, whether we like it or not, unless the rapture happens, there's going to come a day where we are going to participate in that sacred ceremony called the changing of the guard. Dads, I speak from the heart this morning, knowing that the dynamics change daily in our lives, but the charge never does. We must understand that the post and the orders must remain as directed. I turn your attention to Ephesians 6 and 4 where the Apostle Paul addresses the fathers. He said, and you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but notice not moms, but fathers, bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. And I've come today to talk and to speak what I pray will be virtue, what I pray will be encouragement, what I pray will enlighten your understanding, not designed or intended to add pressure, but dads to remind you of the 
privilege of the role and the state that you hold in our families and in our lives. Dads, you are the elite of the elite when it comes to fulfilling the active role as father in the family. You are the elite of the elite. They can do what they want to do. They're never going to succeed at changing, at altering, at perverting God's divine design. God set it in order and God is looking for men that are willing to march, hold their post and fulfill their orders. And dad, that is who you are and the role that you have been called and anointed to fulfill. Every father here today and listening, you are the honor guard of your home and you must accept that responsibility and you must wear with great dignity and honor that silver badge that is stamped upon your life by the Almighty. You are the honor guard of your home. You are the one that is charged with such a privilege and such a role. Every father in this house, today more than ever before, you are that nail in a sure place upon which hangs the idea identity of your entire family because if they can ever get that role that active role of father to be perverted to look differently then guess what then Eve doesn't know who she is and then the children look and they don't know who they are but I'm here to tell you that where there is a father where there is a father that is on active duty where there is a father that is marching as the honor guard, the identity and the security of every member of the family is secure and it is safe. You are that nail. Dad, you are that sentinel that is watching, that is standing between your home and your family and any possible threat. You are so much more than a paycheck, so much more than a provider, but an active duty dad in a world like you and I are living in today, it is a priceless, priceless commodity. You are, dad, our infantry soldier marching on the black mat and I know that it's difficult at times I know that we grow weary I know that it seems bullets are flying today perhaps more than ever before from every direction but dads we must keep our focus we must do everything we can to remain laser sharp in our purpose we must do everything we can not to be distracted it is a 24 hour 7 day a week 365 day a year post and you dad you and I we are leading the way and we are looking out for the souls that we have been charged to overwatch hallelujah it is in this crazy world that we find ourselves in today in which this role and the understanding of it is more important to, again than ever before. Matt Walsh has initiated a national probe into womanhood. Brother Shock talked to us about it a little bit at our men's prayer breakfast, raising the awareness of this documentary. His specific question, now again a popular documentary, asked the question, what is a woman? And Supreme Court nominee Katanji Brown Jackson, when asked the question, she either could not or would not provide a definitive answer. And while that question has mystified our corrupt society, the better question might be what constitutes a godly man and or a godly father on this day that we celebrate. And as we consider men, whether we be sons, fathers, or husbands, there is a necessary distinction to be made between a man and a godly man. Fathers will be honored across this country today and given due recognition. 
But a godly father, a godly man or husband is set apart from the rest. A godly father, really simply put, is a godly father, is a dad who simply follows God. It's that simple. He simply follows God. Tomb guards, they undergo interviews, trial runs, memorization of Arlington National Cemetery history. And they must repeat verbatim. And they must memorize and regurgitate and be tested all to earn a walk. Dads, I remind you today in the fear of God that there is nothing in your life more valuable to each of us than your walk with God. You may not have earned it, but you have been blessed to walk it. You have been blessed and anointed by God to live it. Let me just tell you, dads, we want you to succeed. We want you to be intelligent. We want you to be promoted. We want you to be a good provider. We want you to be safe. We want you to live a balanced life. We want you to do all the things that your heart desires and pursue your dreams and aspirations as God has gifted you. But dads, the most valuable possession that you have to offer is your walk with God. More than ever before in the army of the Lord, we need men that are men, fathers that are fierce, that will walk a walk with God. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, Dad? I don't know what size your shoe, but your footprints must be so unmistakably firm so as that we can look and we can follow in them. Your manner of life, your manner of life, and your methods of practice, they matter, Dad, as you march on day after day after day. When it came time for the Apostle Paul to address his protege, Timothy, this is what he was able to say with a great confidence. He said, but thou, Timothy, you have fully known, you have fully known my doctrine you have fully known my manner of life, not the rare occasions, not the snapshot memories, but Timothy, you have watched, you have observed, you have seen and come to know the manner of my life, my purpose, my faith, my long suffering, my love, my patience. Timothy, you've seen me in all kinds of situations, you've seen me afflicted, you've seen me in. Confirmed. You've seen me persecuted. You have watched me day in and day out. And Timothy, you have become acquainted with my way and my manner of life. Dad, your doctrine what you believe, what you hold dearest to your heart when it comes to your walk in life. Dad, your doctrine makes a difference. Your doctrine makes a difference. We need you to grasp hold of the Shema like never before. We need you to teach us in the morning when we wake up. We need you to hear. We need to hear you say it throughout the day. We need to hear it echo from your heart when we go to bed at night here O Israel here Trenacost family here Bonnevillian family here Hodges family the Lord our God is one Lord and him only will we serve hallelujah Dads, you are sentinels, and we are watching and observing who and what it is that you actually serve. Your doctrine makes a difference. The God of your life, the God to whom you worship, is the same God that chances are we too are going to worship as well. Because whether you recognize it or not, it is just comes 
with the role and it comes with the, with the office, so to speak, that you are looked to, you are admired, you are our hero. Whether you feel like one or not, we look to you. We want to be like you. We want to emulate you. And so, Dad, your doctrine makes a difference. We can't afford for you to be distracted, for you to lose your focus and lose your walk and go astray. We must make sure, fathers, that we are clear in our purpose. We must get with God and find out what it is He created us for and to do and how it is that He wants us to serve and lead our families. Dad, your manner of life matters. We need today so desperately this generation of young people, this generation that is becoming more and more confused based on the conflict of beliefs. They need to come home at night. They need to wake up in the morning and they need to hear and they need to see a father and a family that is strong in their beliefs, that is set unwavering, uncompromised in your values and steadfast in your faith. And it is more, it is more than just the words that we speak. It is more than just attendance at church. It is the manner of life that we are living on a daily basis, even when no one is watching. Dad, your worship matters. Your worship matters. Everything about the state and role of fatherhood matters. But fathers, your worship matters. We need more than ever before godly fathers. What does a godly father look like? What is a godly man? One that is sure of his doctrine. One that is sure of his purpose. One that is human. One that is authentic. But a godly father is one that will lead the family in worship. Lifting up holy hands, the apostle Paul said, I would to God that men everywhere would lift up holy hands in praise. It is paramount in this day. Dads, we need you. We need you weeping. We need you shouting. We need you, dads, at the altar. We don't need your altar, your life altered. We need you living a life at the altar. What we need today more than ever before is sentinels, fathers that are serving in ministry, fathers that give Give generously and support continuously the working of the works of God and the kingdom of God. A godly father, a godly man, one that is not led by the flesh, but rather stepping in stride to the cadence of the spirit of God. Dads, we need you like we've never needed you before. Not only our families, but society. And yes, even the kingdom of God needs you like we've never needed you to be on the front lines. Elite dads that are able, that are striving to exhibit both love and judgment. Standing for what is right. Standing in a world that is going wrong for what is right. In a world that is becoming ungodly and unholy, we need you standing for what is holy. In a world that is being filled with falsehood and lies, we need dads in this day and hour that are willing to stand for what is true on a daily basis. We know it's a balancing act. We know it's a, it's a, it's a juggle, if you will. But to be able to demonstrate compassion, balance when necessary with courage, Correction and even at times with rebuke. Godly fathers, capable of enduring hardness as good soldiers of Christ. Hardness, and no doubt we can all relate to the difficulties that we face. Could you imagine out there, 24-7, 365, no one watching, 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, inclement weather, snow, hail, ice, rain, freezing temperatures, but fathers out there 
steadfast, locked in, focused, remaining unentangled from the affairs of this life because they're living in such a way that they're trying their best to please him who hath called them to be soldiers in the first place. Fathers, we're looking to you today and we're counting on your example. We need you. We need you. We don't expect you to be perfect, but dad, we need you. We need you to teach us. Isn't it amazing the way we often look at the exterior? We often look at the broad stroke picture at the surface, if you will, of the canvas. But these men, before they ever earn a walk, they have to learn how to keep their uniforms. They have to learn how to operate, if you will, their weapons. They have to learn the history of where they came from and what it is that they desire to do. These men, they have to learn the basics beneath the surface beneath what those that look on see and discern so casually. Dads, we need you to teach us how to be impeccably uniformed in this day and hour. Hallelujah. Yes, we want you to teach us. We want you to teach us how to dress, how to go camping, how to fish, how to hunt, how to skin a deer, how to gut a fish. We want you to teach us us how to shoot a gun and cast a, 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 a net or, or swing a club. We need all that. God, we even, dads, we even need you to teach some of us how to put ourselves together, what color shoes to wear with what belt and what suit and what tie. But what we need more than ever is for you to teach us how to be impeccably uniformed and adorn the armor of God. How Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to encourage you. There is pride. There is a, a squaring of the shoulders of these men that desire to volunteer for such a role. We, we, we chose to be fathers. And we need you how to wear that, arm, that armor of God. We need fathers to teach us how to put on every day when we wake up the helmet of our salvation. We need to know how to properly fit that breastplate of righteousness in order that our hearts are able to be protected and guarded from those fiery darts. We need loins that are girt about with truth. We need feet that are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We need you to teach us how to march in cadence with the gospel and the word of God. How to remain on the paths of righteousness. Even though at times a righteous man will stumble. But how to get back up again and keep marching. We need fathers to teach us how to get in superb spiritual condition. And to possess an unblemished character of record of in character and integrity. Dads, we need you. We're watching you. We need fathers that are honest, men of character, men of principle, men of integrity. And can I tell you, it sounds like every father should be this, but we're living in a world that is fighting against and a world that is causing us to question every innate teaching that we have within our hearts. We need fathers. Dads, we need you. We need you to hit the books. We need you to learn how to operate your weapon we need you to know, we need you to teach us how to perform shoulder arm movements, keeping our weapon between us and the threats. We need you to, how, to teach us how to operate in the word of God, rightly dividing the word of truth. We, we need you to teach us that, to get in the weapon, to get, to get into the book, if you will. But we need to see you do it. We need hands-on training. We need teaching. We need you to show us how to keep that word immaculately hidden in the confines of our human hearts. But fathers, fear not. Fear not this morning because we understand the weight of responsibility that rests on you. And yet we've also allowed for a margin of mercy. 
because we realize that none of us are perfect. We realize, as the Apostle Paul said, that when we go to do good, evil is most often present with us. We know and understand that there are going to be those days you don't want to get up and march. The days that you want to shrug off that responsibility of little eyes and little ears that are watching and listening. But we want you to know, Dad, that we love you just like you are. But we need you and we need you to continue to train and we need you to continue to march on because we're counting on you. These and so many other godly characteristics are found in the scripture and yet they are almost absent in our American way of life and growing more so as the days unfold. The world's desire for gender equality has come at a cost of men. The godly man is even rarer still. Among world religions, I thought this so interesting that among the world religions, the American Christian man is the only one that does not lead in worship. If you think about that, it is so true. All of the other major religions of the world feature men. Men worshiping, men dancing, men giving, men serving, yet not in the American culture in which we are submerged. So now, more than ever before, we desperately need godly fathers, godly men that are willing to lead the way and do the same within our lives and the church that we are a part. Just as important, however, as it is to possess these characteristics, we must, dads, Position ourselves to pass them on. There will come a day and there will come an hour if the Lord tarry where every one of us as fathers are going to be engaged and participate in a changing of the guard ceremony. The changing of the guard, it is so important. It's any situation in which an individual is charged with a task or a responsibility, and then they are replaced by another individual. We are not going to live on forever. If the Lord tarries, there will be a day that we are going to pass a baton to our sons and to our daughters alike. One of the most amazing things is that when this three-team relief, they come into play, they literally, whether men or women, they choose those that are of like height, like size, and like weight. So that when there is this elaborate exchange known is the changing of the guard it is seemingly similar it is almost just as similar as what your eyes were seeing before the exchange took place it is so important that this is what we are striving for to take the beliefs to take the manner of life to take the values to take the principles and as we march to make sure that they are being not just taught but that they are being caught and that there is a receiving on the other end of what will one day be the changing of the guard in our lives. We look to 2 Kings 14. I, I will not bore you, but as you are acquainted, I'm sure many of you, as you've read through the Word of God, we read verse after verse, chapter after chapter, chapter of unfortunate changing of the guard ceremonies. We read how many times those that God anointed and placed in such royal roles, how they live their lives in such a careless way that when it came time for the passing of the baton and the changing of the guard, whether intentionally or just by default, we see that there was an imprint made. There was a mark that was made on the lives that were now coming after that would march to the very same cadence of their fathers. I look at a man like uh, 
Hezekiah who marched on valiantly and yet somehow when it came to the changing of the guard in his family dynamic he gave birth to a young man by the name of Manasseh and Manasseh was nothing like his father Hezekiah but scripture gives us just a little insight because when judgment came to Hezekiah and correction from God he was just happy and he was content and satisfied that as long as the judgment as long as the consequence as long as the difficulty was not in his day he gave no thought to the coming day where the changing of the guard would take place and we see that Manasseh raised up in his stead to only be one of the most wicked evil kings in the history of Israel and Judah but in 2 Kings 14 and 1 we learn of a young man by the name of Joash he was an incredible king who did right in the sight of the Lord but he gave birth and when it came time for the changing of the guard Amaziah his son reigned in his stead and in verse 3 listen to what the scripture reads of Amaziah it says that he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord yet not like David his father David was the benchmark David was the gold standard or the silver badge if you will of fathers that walked in a way that would be admired and to be emulated but watch what the scripture says that Amaziah did not do like David his father but he did according to all things that Joash his father did showing us a very invaluable and important premise that in spite of God being our heavenly father and in spite of past father figures or father-like people that we can look to and learn from, there is nothing more influential than the father that is in your own family because dads, we are the ceiling. We are depicting an image. We are portraying a purpose and an existence and it is so important that we do so understanding the honor of the position we hold. 16 times the Bible tells us of there being successful changing of the guards throughout the book of Kings 1 and 2. But 23 times there was a slip. 23 times the Bible reads that they would go on and do evil according to all that their fathers had done. Oh yes, there was a time or two where there would be a, a, a skipping over, if you will, that there would be an influence in that next king's life that would maybe redirect their path. But most time, they turned around and they walked according to the same march that they had observed for years in their father's life. We look to Samuel and Eli. How does it happen? Samuel, the greatest prophet in all of Israel, how does he raise up two sons that he socially promotes. He puts them in position as judges. And yet people see and discern. They're not like their dad. They're not like their father. We see Joab. And we see, uh, we, we, we see his sons. And, and it's just Joel and, 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 and Abiah. And they're, just, they're not like Samuel. We see Eli. How does he turn around and be such an incredible high priest? And yet he raises up a Hophni and a Phinehas that somehow they, they never even made it to the changing of the guard ceremony. Such incredible fathers. And I, 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 I don't know where they went wrong, but I just know this, that their example, their example was impeccable. And that's all you can do. We're not responsible for what the next generation does with it, but we are responsible to set the standard standard and to be able to emulate or set the, the benchmark for what they are to reach for. When it comes time for the changing of the guard, I don't know about you, but there's no do-overs. There's no do-overs. I want to be ready. I want to be right. And I want to be in position. The retired guards and the relieving guards, as I said, they look similar in appearance. It was the Apostle Paul who said, follow me as I follow Christ. While we're in pursuit of God, know that others are in pursuit of our 
example. And there is going to come a day, there will come a day if the Lord tarries, when Christ, our relief commander, is going to speak and he is going to order every father, the relieved sentinel, if you will, when it comes that time. And he is going to say to us, pass on your orders. What is it that we're going to pass on? Pass on your orders. And dads, as the current sentinel, you are going to respond or you would want to be able to respond. Post and orders remain as directions. Fathers, bring up your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Dads, teach your young men and your little girls how to be men and what to expect from men as they grow up and grow older. But you want to put everything you can into them so that you can say with a confidence, God, post and orders remain as directed. Did I have difficult days? Yes. Did I make mistakes? Yes. Did I need mercy? Absolutely. Did I stumble and fall? Yes, I did. But I got back up again and the post and the orders remain as directed. And here I am. And to our children that are here today, you will one day be the newly posted sentinels. And it will be the responsibility of every son and every daughter when that day comes to also give a reply. And I would to God that you would be able to say back to the relieving or the relieved sentinel, back to your father, orders acknowledged, and one day step in to that position on the mat. It is so important. If the changing of the guard doesn't take place just as it is prescribed, there is no way that for 74 years without a glitch, without an alteration, without any modifications, there is no way that it continues to this very moment because they understand the value of what it is that they watch over and what it is they protect and stand as the guard thereof. Dads, this is a day like no other day. You are that sentinel, and our prayers are continuously with you to be that spiritual, godly example to lead the way for us in our lives. I would like for every dad to stand in this house this morning, every father. No doubt some of us, we received our post from a less than perfect example. But I remind us in the fear of the Lord that we do have a father to look to. David, who walked in all the ways of God and did what was right in the Lord's eyes, he had a heavenly father he looked to. He had a heavenly father that taught him how to be that lion-like man and that lamb-like man all in the same. And so dads, where we feel inadequate, where we feel like we fall short, I remind you that we have a heavenly father that we have to look to and that we can emulate through the learning and the, the being acquainted with his word. We have a heavenly father. And I want this morning for you to understand what an incredible honor it is that each of you have and that you are able and you are capable and we are in your corner cheering you on. I would invite all of our children to stand this morning. All of our children, boys, girls, if you would stand this morning as well. Your fathers have a great responsibility Many times you may not understand the reasons behind their teaching, their example, their correction, 
their wisdom. You, you, you may not fully understand what even I am trying to say today, but there will come a day that you will look and you will become that man. You will become that adult and you will have been given the opportunity to acknowledge and to receive what you have been given and everything that has been poured into you. And will you be able and will you embrace that responsibility one day as the new sentinel? And I know that's a lot to think about right now, but I want us to have the reality of understanding there's going to come a day, Brother Matt. There's going to come a day. There's going to come a day in the Hodges family. There's going to come a day in every one of our families, in the Bonnevillian family, in, in the Warner family. There's going to come a day where they're going to look and they're going to have that opportunity to embrace and to receive the orders and the posts themselves. And when you come to making that exchange, you want to do so with the utmost confidence, knowing that you have been preparing for the changing of the guard. I open these altars this morning and I invite every father to come down. I ask every dad to make the march to this altar. Every dad. Your value increases day by day. Your worth is immeasurable. There's no substitute. There's no substitute for you. No one else could take your place. Nothing else is going to get the job done. God set it in order. And there's no one else that can do what you can do. And there's no one else charged with the charge that you have been given to raise your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. What we need desperately more than ever before is godly men. Men that are rare but men that hold a role that is irreplaceable. And gentlemen, we pray for you this morning. And every family and every family member, our prayers, if not already, need to be increased in their fervency that our fathers would be able to execute that office of fatherhood as they look to their heavenly father, as they are in the word of God, and as they learn, as they learn continuously how to, to march on with integrity and char character. If all the rest of us could stand and if we can stretch forth our hands to these incredible men, we're not there yet, but Jesus, if you tarry, there is coming a day that there is going to be a changing of the guard God, what we are passing on is more than a post. What we're protecting is more than a tomb. But Lord, that day is going to come and we are entrusted with the priceless treasure of your truth. And God, what we do with that truth, how well we learn that truth, how efficiently and effectively that we apply the truth and the methods thereof to our lives is up to each and every one of us. It's up to each and every one of us. God, let our manner of life and our methods of living and serving and giving. God, let our methods of how well we maintain our character and our integrity and our principles. Lord, let them be worthy, worthy of acceptance. Let them be, Lord God, admirable that our children and our families would want to embrace and would want to walk on that same mat that we have spent our lives marching on. God, I am asking you like never before to extend your holy arm of anointing and power. Let the hand of God rest upon every honor guard that is standing at his post this day.
God, fill them with wisdom. God, bless them with anointing. Oh, God, strengthen them for the God march and the watch at hand. God, give them character. Help them to develop integrity and truth and honesty and live out the righteous attributes that are found in the manual of life. Lord, bless our fathers today. God, give them relief where they need relief. God, give them relief when they need relief. And Lord, I pray that when you inspect them, that you would find them ready and you would find them fit. Oh, Lord God, to continue in their walk with you. A walk that we could follow easily. A walk that we could surrender and submit to willingly and with a confidence, oh God, that we too one day will take position at the very post when it comes our time. Jesus, bless our dads. God, wrap your loving arms around them. Let them feel your love like never before. Help them to stand for truth, what is right, what is holy, what is pure, and let nothing pervert their purpose, O oh God, as you have called them. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I would love it right now. I would love it right now if, if every, every, every child could find your father and come around your dad right now. I know it's a little chaotic, but if, if every child could just, just find your dad. I just want you to find your dad. And, and I, want you, I want you to get close to him. I, I want you to hug him. And, and I, want you to, I, want you to, I want you to know that you're holding on to you're holding on to the most cherished gift that God could ever give you in a father, a godly father. And I want you to know today that dads, you are holding, you are holding a priceless possession of the souls that God has created and placed in your care and your stewardship. What a beautiful, beautiful gift that God has given us. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to stand at my post. I want to carry out my charge. And I want to one day be able to know with the confidence that I can pass it on and I can go on with a great assurance that the job has been done according to the will of God. Heavenly Father, right now, as they sing, let us pray. Fathers, pray over your children. Dads, ask God for grace. Ask God for mercy. Ask God for strength today. In the name of Jesus, and to everyone without a father, know that God is near and that God never leaves his office vacated. Hallelujah. Dads, pray over your families if you would. Pray and ask God to give you strength to be that godly example that nothing would pervert your family unit, that nothing would uh, pervert your family, your family design in the name of Jesus.